So welcome to PB time. You may be wondering, well, what in the world is PB time? And why is it on a YouTube channel? Well, in the past, when I spent a lot of opportunity with young adults in Washington, D.C., and even 10 years as a youth pastor, people called me PB. Some people thought that stood for peanut butter, but during those days, it was it was Pastor Bill. But one of the things that I used to love doing was just getting into a circle, just getting our chairs, you know, just in a round circle and just share with each other what... I felt God was showing me during my Bible studies, and I would share a little bit into a glimpse of my own spiritual journey and the things I was discovering. So I want to, I just feel called today to do that. And we have a platform now that with YouTube, we can share these and if they bring value to you, that's great. And just give you a glimpse of what I feel like I'm hearing God say these days to me. And so I want to ask you, and today I want to talk a little bit about the divine directive. And the question I want to ask you is who here is going through a season of uncertainty and needs direction? Because that's where I've been. I've been in this entire year going through this challenge of things were very uncertain and needing direction. And so I found myself looking towards the story of Elijah, and I call it the divine directive. And really, it's a story that shows me how you position yourselves in times of uncertainty and how to trust God's direction. Because when there are so many voices and there's so much activity in the world, it's it's hard to know exactly what to do sometimes. I think they're lying, right? I think there's, I'm never 100% certain. I have faith to believe, but there's there's always a kernel of doubt in our lives. And that's why we need faith. And um, I find faith through the word of God. So when I get into the word of God, I started thinking about Elijah. And Elijah's really a, a unique character, right? I mean, when we think about biblical heroes, Elijah always comes, right? Because it's like gunfight at the OK Corral is what took place on Mount Carmel, right? It just is a standoff and he wins and he 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 calls fire down from heaven. He he sees rain coming after a drought, and he's really known as this amazing, miraculous character of the Old Testament. And and I was shocked as I was reminded that really out of the entire Bible, 66 books, there's really only about six chapters totally dedicated to Elijah's story. And it starts in Elijah 17. And so if you don't mind, I'm going to read that real quick, real quick, and then we'll jump into how does he get this divine directive? And it says, And Elijah the Tishbite and the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, so this is, we don't even know where he comes from. We don't even know, you know, what, how God called him. It's just chapter 17 and Elijah. It just, boom. There he is. And not only is boom, there he is, he's got a word he's given to the king. And apparently God gave him this word. And he says to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. In other words, he's prophesying a drought. And so All of a sudden, Elijah shows up and he gives a word to Ahab, a prophecy that God gives him. And in verse two, then the word of the Lord came to him, Elijah saying, get away from here and turn eastward, hide by the brook of Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from that brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed you. So the introduction to Elijah to the entire landscape of the Bible is he is prophesying to Ahab there's going to be a drought. And then God says three things. I need you to get away. I need you to turn. And I need you to hide. And so when I break this down, it's amazing to me how he is such a significant figure and God commands him in the very beginning of his of his ministry, call it, that I need you to get away, I need you to hide, uh, I need you to turn, I need you to hide. And you may think, wow, there's there's easy symbolism there to recognize. And today I want to 
talk about those. And maybe, maybe it is obvious, but I, I think about it. What is it? What does it really mean when you get a divine directive from God and how does he prepare you for that divine directive? And I think it's one, you, you have to get away. God calls us for separation. Uh, number two is that we have to turn. And this is like the act of, of change. I knew repentance comes, but we'll, we'll talk about that. And then thirdly, hide. In, in other words, I need you to experience my protection. And so three things happens. I want you to look at this with the, with, with the symbolism of these three things. God says to Elijah, get away. And I believe this is very, very simple. When we're looking for a divine directive from God, this represents a break from the familiar and, and other influences. There has to be a getaway time for us when we're looking for God's direction. And what happens in that getaway time is it's time for reflection and receiving God's guidance. And we know a lot of Elijah's story, but this is his introduction into the entire kingdom, you know, storyline. And, and the first thing God says to him is separate yourself, break away from the familiar and spend time receiving from me and reflecting on my words for you. So I don't know where you are right now. And if you're neat, if you're in a season of uncertainty and you're in a season needing direction, then find time to separate yourself, to get away. Number two is that I want you to turn. And, 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 and this is really about obedience and change. And if you've been a, a, if you've studied the Bible at all, you've ever been, you know, in a church for very long, you would know that like repentance and turning go hand in hand. And I do believe that, that, that there's a repentance side of understanding that, that repentance means to turn and go a different direction. But sometimes it's not about repentance. It's about just simple direction from God. And I see there's a symbolism here for realignment, not just repentance, but realignment. Turning is a symbol to realigning to God's will. And so if you need direction in your life, the question is, are you, are you realigning yourself to the will of God? And it, it, it is a proactive step to obedience and it's a proactive step to a realigning yourself to God's direction. So when you are uncertain and you need divine direction, begin to turn and realign yourself to God's will. You, It's not new things that you're looking for, but it's the old things that you realign yourself in perspective. And so God tells Elijah, I need you to get away. I need you to turn. And then the third thing he says, I, I want you to hide. And, and the symbolism here is when we know what he's telling him to do, he says, I want you to go to the brook. And when you're there at the brook, you're going to drink from the brook. I'm going to provide for you um, for your thirst. And I've commanded the ravens to feed you. And what this says to me is that when you need direction and when times are uncertain, this is when you need God's protection and provision. And so hiding is saying, it's not all up to me. I'm getting into your presence where your protection and your provision comes. So I want you to hear me. I'm hiding to get into your presence so that I receive your protection and your provision. And this is where spiritual strength really comes from. We know that Elijah does some amazing things in the coming chapters. Miraculous things take place. Provision with the widow, the healing of a dead son, the, break, the, the, the showdown at Mount Carmel. All these amazing things happen. But that spiritual giant and the spiritual strength of Elijah came when he was in seclusion. Strength comes when we hide in his presence to receive his protection and to receive his provision. And so as I think about times being uncertain, when I think of needing direction, Elijah gives me a picture of what it means to get away, uh, to turn, and to hide. And so I want to encourage you today that as you think about your relationship with God right now, 
and you think about needing wisdom and direction, I want to encourage you to to delve into the and, and have a little bit of that Elijah experience on your own. Maybe maybe this weekend, maybe for one afternoon, can you find the opportunity to just get away? And when you get away, to just align yourself and prepare yourself for change, to turn and align yourself with God's will and to hide in his presence. When you do those things, you accomplish amazing things on the other side. You know, on the other side of this, what happened in Elijah's life and as a result of his divine directive, unexpected supernatural miracles took place. And when you read what happens in the rest of chapter 17, when you read chapters 18 and 19, when you read in 2 Kings and you realize about the chariot of the uh, of fire that took him into heaven, these were supernatural, unexpected miracles. And I believe God is going to provide you and I unexpected, supernatural miracles when we are people who are willing to get away, turn, and hide. Hey, I hope this is a blessing to you. It's just some things have been speaking to me. If you have some thoughts about it, you know, just put it in the chat and share. And if there's any way we can be a blessing to you, just reach out and let us know. Thanks.